worship him. He's highly exalted. Blessed be your name, Lord. We acknowledge your mighty presence. We worship and celebrate your majesty. There is none like you. You are the reason we came. We owe you all the praise. We owe you all the glory. Only the living, only the living can praise you. And let everyone that has breath shout hallelujah. Give God a clap offering and you may be seated. You are welcome to church this morning. And I trust the Lord that God will visit you with his word. In the name of Jesus. Today is our special monthly communion service. Special monthly anointing service. Praise the Lord. And today you are going with an impartation by the anointing in the name of Jesus. The theme of the month is God's plan for me is in his book. And the teaching series for our Sunday services is God's plan for our lives is in his book. This morning, we shall continue with part two. The first thing I like to say is that the best thing that can be happening to anyone is to be following God's plan for his or her life. The best thing that can happen to any one of us is to be following God's plan. I say the best thing that can be happening, and I chose that word deliberately, that can be happening, not that can happen. Because God's plan is progressive. It keeps happening. God's plan for our lives keeps unfolding. So the best thing that can be happening is to be following that plan as God is unfolding it. It's never static. It's always progressive. But hear me, it doesn't cost to obey God and follow his plan for your life. It doesn't cost, it pays. But hear me, it costs not to follow, it costs not to obey. God has a plan for your life and a plan for my life. Predetermined or predetermined before the end of the world, before the foundation of the world. Jeremiah 29 verse 11. We'll look at it in King James translation and if you have the good news translation, we'll take a look at it also. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. To do what? To give you an expected end. Let's look at it from the Good News Translation if you have it. The Bible there says, I alone know the plans. I have for you. Plans to bring you prosperity and not disaster. Plans to bring about the future you hope for. You say, I alone knows the plan. 
The plan I have for you is to bring you prosperity and not disaster. Plans to bring about the future you hope for. You will arrive there in the name of Jesus. If you notice, every one of us, we all have an innate desire to be successful. I've never seen anybody who wants to be a failure. So right on the inside of us, there is an expected plan, a hope, and it is God that puts it there. So I encourage us and I ask us to set your heart on the future you hope for. Not worrying about the challenges of the present. He said, I will give you an expected and the future you hope for. But majority of us take our eyes off the end of the dream seed that God has put in our heart. Of the hope he has put in our heart and begin to worry about the present. Not knowing that what is happening cannot take away what has been planned by God. Your worrying and my worrying can add nothing to it. So why waste your energy worrying on the challenges? I don't know why I'm emphasizing this. But the Spirit of God is impressing my heart to let you know clearly that worrying and that anxiety is a hindrance. He says some of us are worry champions. You are worrying champion. You are hearing me now? If I tell you not to worry, you say, Pastor, how can I do without not worrying? Your worrying and your anxiety is a hindrance to your attaining the end. He says, I should tell you to stop worrying and put your eyes on the world. You are worrying and you are not living in Warwick. <laughs> you are becoming a major warrior. And you are not the mayor of Warwick. Are you here with me? Tell your neighbor, stop worrying. You are not living in Warwick. Even if you live in Warwick, you are not the mayor of Warwick. <laughs> Give God a clap of me. So the first step to following God's plan for us is to clearly see the completed picture of the plan from his book. Because the plan you don't know or you don't see, how can you follow? His book shows us his plan for our lives. And his book shows us how to follow 
to get there. And I like the architectural profession. And it looks to me as if God behaves like an architect. Architects will usually produce two types of plans for any building worthwhile. They will do the model, the prototype, and show you the finished building. You see it beautiful. It's a model. They will show you where the lawn is. They even park miniature cars in the driveway and put plans and show you how beautiful it's going to be. And they have another detailed architectural drawing on paper or on the computer that has a lot of lines. And they will go to the site and you look at the site. It's an ugly mess of mud. And they will show you the model, the building. This building is here. You say, what are you saying? <laughs> all the architects will do, all the construction engineers will do, is to carry the drawing. And every day, they are looking at it, and they are laying block. You understand what I'm saying? They will lay the block and they are smiling. And you who may not understand, you may be bothering yourself. The architects have seen the building finished. They have the plan to follow. <laughs> and as long as they are following that plan, they will get to that building. Come on, give God a clap of it. So once you see that glorious end in the book, now return to the same book and start to look for the steps to arrive there. As long as you are following that steps, you will arrive at the glorious end. God's plan for you and for me is in his book. That is why the Bible is the greatest manual that shows us who we are and what we are and what we can do. Please hear me. We are already a finished work. Like the model, it's already a finished work from the side of God. But we must begin to follow the word to get to the finished work. If you take your eyes off the word, you miscalculate. Do you know why some buildings collapse? Probably, most of the time, they didn't follow the plan. Or the one who did the plan was a quack. <laughs> Praise God. But God is not a quack. His plan is failure-proof. It can't collapse. Please hear me. In Psalm 119, verse 105, the Bible said, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light to my path, guiding you to where? To the finished work. So we must continue to walk in the word, following the settled word. To arrive at the finished work. So if for any reason we are deceived and we take our eyes away from the word, we might get deceived. 
And a person deceived is a person deprived. But you shall not be deceived. I like the testimony of one of us. A few days ago this week, in the course of the week, she gave me, she called me, and I peeped. And all I was hearing her say was that Pastor, I mean, she was speaking in whispers, whoosh tunes. Say, Pastor, I got it. You know, she said, First, Pastor, I have good news for you. I said, That's what I like to hear. Tell me. He said, Pastor, I got it. Pastor, I got it. Oh, I got it. So what did you get? Pastor, with excitement and firm voice, but calm, I got it. And then she began to shed tears of joy. And she said, I have been looking for my healing. I didn't know I had the healing since. She said, I have been standing in the place of sickness waiting for healing. Not knowing that I have been healed, that it was finished since. I just need to take my healing. I said, yes, you got it. <laughs> I said, sister, you got it. He so I got it. Where are you? She said, I'm in the library. You know what she did? She carried the Bible and went to the library. Carried the Bible and went to public library and settled down looking for her healing. Suddenly she screamed. Say, I found it. Everything we are looking for is already finished. It's already settled. Our challenge is seeing it and taking it. And when she said that, I remember Proverbs 24, verse 14. So shall the knowledge of wisdom be unto thy soul. When thou hast found it, then there shall be a reward. And thine expectation shall not be cut off. What you are expecting is tied to when you found, we find it. When, meaning anytime. <laughs> if you find it today, you take it today. Anytime you find it, you take it. Today, you are finding what belongs to you. In the name of Jesus. You see, most of us, we look at the present situation and allow it to cloud what is already settled. The architect who made the plan and the people on the building side are already settled and convinced. Do you know that some people even buy houses off, there is a name it's called, offline, is it? Offline. Off plan, thank you. They just see the picture and they plan and they pay. <laughs> and you are celebrating, you say, I just bought a house. But it's not even your beauty. But you saw 
what are you doing with the picture you saw in the scripture? That you are not buying it. <laughs> you can buy house that man drew. <laughs> you can buy the picture that men drew and pay for it and go. And you are celebrating the one God drew. <laughs> He said, buy the truth and what? Sell it not. Buy the word. If you get this now, you get it for life. You live here, you can sleep on the head of the devil. If he was devil and too strong, why did he, did he lose his place? Why did he lose his place and he's threatening you? And you are agreed. Oh, is ignoramus blindfolded. It's because you are taking your eyes away from it. That is why all God is doing is to open our eyes to go back into the book and look at the plan and insist on it and walk into it. Everything the Holy Ghost is doing now is to just open our eyes to understand. Nothing new he's doing. Just helping, just understand. See. I can't forget a scriptural, revelatory, visionary encounter the Lord gave to me some years ago. And he gets me drunk and intoxicated. You know, several years ago, the bishop, the presiding bishop of, of this church said, he was preaching in the church then, and the church then was roofed by grass, it was touch roof. But he kept telling the people and the floor was not even cemented. Eight floor. But he saw a picture of himself as a very wealthy preacher. And he would tell the people in the church there that he's one of the wealthiest preachers in the world. He saw God's prosperity plan for himself, but he was preaching in a thatched roof church and a mud flood church. He said, when they dance, dust rise. But he saw himself. And when he used to say it, some members would go and tell people outside, this is your bishop, this is your pastor. Won't you people tell him to stop saying this kind of thing? And he said the woman was so concerned and came to him and said, please, sir, don't say it again. <laughs> please don't say you are rich again. People are mocking the way they are talking about you too much. I feel it. Please, sir, don't say it again. He said he heard the woman came to church the next day and encouraged it. <laughs> he said, I won't just be one of the wealthiest. I am the wealthiest. He saw it. And he was following God's plan. Some years ago, in a visionary encounter, the Bible, big Bible, appeared before me. And the hand opened the Bible and read Genesis chapter 1 and went to chapter 1, verse 1, and jumped to verse 31. And the voice read and said, in the beginning, God created. I knew that in the Bible, in the beginning, God created. Then he went to verse 31 and read the translation, I have not seen. And he said, God saw everything he had created. That was the translation I saw, not made. God saw everything he had created 
and behold, it was very successful. This one says, very good. God saw everything he had created, and behold, it was very successful. Then the voice said to me, do you know you are created to be very successful? From that day, Kai, I, I think success. Kadushi Kukata Kakita. But again, I began to dig deep into that scripture. I began to study it. I began to look for all the English translations. I couldn't find anyone that used those exact words. And then the Holy Ghost said, I am the one who told you, let me teach you. In the beginning, he created. Isn't it? So why would they conclude that at the end, in the beginning, he, he saw that he made? Do you know, there's a difference between make, make, and create. They are not the same thing. They are not what? Make or made is the past tense of make, isn't it? So there is a difference between to make and to create. To make simply means to bring something new out of what already existed. To bring something new out of a process that already existed, then you make. You make sure when you carry the rubber, you carry other things. But you create when you bring something new, innovate, and use what was never in existence. Then he said, I create by the force of the spirit and bring to bed what didn't exist. Then he said, I didn't make man, I created man. If you look at Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 and then verse 27, I'm showing you this. You say, God say, you say, God say, I didn't make man. I didn't make man. You say, let us make man in our image. This is a declaration of intention. Let us make. The next verse said, and so God created man. He, Genesis chapter 2, verse 3. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because that in it he had rested from all his works which he both what, created and so he made some, he created some. But he both made man, the natural man, Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. Let me show you how he made man. And the Lord God formed man. That is, he made man. Out of what? The dust of the ground. Material that already existed. So the aspect of man that was made was the flesh. Out of the dust. The aspect that was created was the spirit. No wonder he said, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. It is the new creature that is created to be successful. Success is packaged in the created part of man, not in the made part of man. <laughs> so you see, 2 Corinthians 2.15. Let's explore that scripture. You see what I'm saying. Let's catch a picture. 2 Corinthians 5.17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. So a man can become a new creature. 
the natural man can become a new creature if he be in Christ. So, the created aspect of us is better through Christ. So, if you are never in Christ and not in Christ, you are only made. If any be in Christ, any man be in Christ, so a man here can become a new creature here if he be in Christ. And vice versa. So a man can live, abandon his new creation status and go back to be a man. How? By no more being in Christ. So what am I saying? We are to explore who we are in Christ. <laughs> Just look for who you are in Christ. And you begin to understand who truly you are. And you can change the dynamics of the natural part of you and everything that surrounds you by your existence in Christ. Put that scripture there again. He said, if any man be in Christ, is a new creature. That means nobody in Christ is truly old. So, if you are in Christ, nothing actually gets old in you. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 18. I'm going somewhere. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 18. Oh, first, let's look at first. First Corinthians. I'm looking for the scripture that says, do our outward man perish, our inward man is renewed day by day. God bless you. You see, the more you understand who you are in Christ, see what begins to happen. The older you become in Christ, the newer you are. So, your natural systems naturally may be aging, but the real you is becoming newer. Look at it. But for this cause, we faint not. For though our outward man perish, that is, our natural body is getting old, Yet, the inward man is renewed day by day. So, if you have been renewing it every day, as the day goes by, the new it becomes. <laughs> so, you can never get to the point where you say, you are too old to produce some things. <laughs> Speaking to some people. Say, age has passed me. I can't conceive again. The older you are in Christ, the newer you are. <laughs> because if you've been renewing every day, you are getting newer and newer and newer. So every new day, you are newer. God. That was what happened to our Sarah and Abraham. They thought it was past time. They didn't understand that the aspect of them that is going to generate the force does not get old. (laughs) 
the aspect of them that is going to, that's why, hear me for somebody. That thing you applied for, it, you can't be too late. No, 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 no. This thing applies to every area of life. You draw from your spiritual force, apply it to the natural, and change the course of the natural. Are you here? So, what do we need to do? We must maintain our position in Christ to maximize our possibilities. If any man be in Christ. I like one translation of that scripture. I think it's easy to read translation of 2 Corinthians 4.16. Easy to read translation if you have it. You are able to find it. The ERV. Translation. So, what am I doing with us this morning? I'm on, if you see it, you throw it on the screen. What am I doing here now? I'm opening our understanding <laughs> to who we are in Christ, to the possibilities we have, to the potentials we have. To see that nothing can hold us down. If you truly understand this, the older you are naturally, if you can check it online, copy it and put it on the screen for me. ERV, easy to read translation. The older you are, the stronger you should be. Pastor, be realistic now. I believe the Bible more than you. That is, I believe the Bible than believe your experience. If you tap into this, that is why, you see, believers don't die because they get old. You die when your time is up. <laughs> Maybe I'm speaking over your head. <laughs> Let me not dig too deep. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm destroying your theology. And so people is, they are, say, Pastor, what are you saying? <laughs> are you with me? God bless you. Is that easy to read translation? 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16. Okay, is that it? Okay, this is why we never give up. Do you see that now? Our physical body is becoming older and weaker. But our spirit inside, uh, this, but our spirit inside us is made new when? <laughs> Does that not make it very clear? <laughs> very clear. So the real you is newer than 10 years ago. <laughs> so how can you now tell me you are too old? <laughs> how can you now tell me it's too late for you? Who told you that? Where did you see that picture? And they told you you came too late. No. Go back again. Is somebody here? Give a clap offering to the Lord. That is why we are redeemed to be more than conquerors. You see, the redeemed man is the created man. The created man. And the created man in Christ 
triumphs over every situation. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. Now thanks be unto God, <laughs> which always causes us to triumph. We are in Christ. As long as you are in Christ, every trial is for your triumph. I can guarantee you that. Except you are not in Christ. If you are positioned correctly in Christ, every trial the devil sends is for your triumph. He say, who always, no, sometimes. <laughs> so meaning, every trial that came, came to make you triumph. Always. In everywhere. And make it manifest by us the server of his knowledge where everywhere, including Nottingham. <laughs> including United Kingdom. Hear me. We are redeemed to enjoy health and wholeness. Health and wholeness. Matt. Matthew 8, verse 16. And when the evil was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils. And he cast out the spirits with his word and healed all that were sick. Look at it. They brought unto him and he casts them out. And you are in him. They brought to him. And he casts them out. So that means. Everyone diseased, oppressed. The moment they brought to him. He used this word. Cast the spirits out. Now we are in him. What can remain? What can remain? We are in him. And sickness can be in us in him. There is no way you will be in water and you are not soaked. No matter how hard you pray. No matter the devilish Schemings. If we put you in water, what will happen? So if we put you in Christ, Katakukapa. If you understand this, you just go and tell them. you see, look at, that's what this is kind of thing some people understood. People like Smith Wigglesworth we'll understood and they saw the devil physically and they hissed at him. Say, is it you? And he went to sleep. He didn't pray. Over the weekend, I don't know if the sister is here. Last week, last week, not this week, she called me and she was literally crying over the phone. Say, Pastor. And I think that was the first time she called me. He said, I have tried everything I could to apply for mortgage. They brought all manner of excuses. I applied. They will say another thing. They, will, they have tossed me and tossed me. I have done everything. I don't know what to do again. They have denied me and denied me and everything. And blessed be her soul. I just finished praying. Wake up! gentle voice of the spirit I said they will give you I said let us pray Father in the name of Jesus divine intervention 
I stand in authority on the Lord. I reverse it. I decree that what is due to you be given you now in Jesus' name. Amen. Sometimes I pray and shout. Sometimes I don't shout. <laughs> on this occasion, I was calm. <laughs> and I think a few days ago, I saw her come. And now she was smiling. <laughs> He said, Pastor, I went and they have approved it. I said, why would they approve it? <laughs> this thing is just understanding where we are and who we are and standing in the authority of the world. I believe God. Tell yourself, I believe God. <laughs> I doubt my fears. Say, I doubt my fears. I choose to disbelieve the devil. And I believe God. And he shall be unto me according to his word. Give God a clap of it. <laughs> We are redeemed to be fruitful and not to be barren. We explained that already. But how do we realize the above glorious plans in our life? Key number one, the love of God in our heart. Love God genuinely and passionately. genuinely from your heart. Oh my God. Bishop was speaking this morning. He said you can read all my books and you won't find my secret until you know my heart beat for God. If God is truly your number one lover, doesn't matter what the devil does or how angry he is. Your lover will fight for you. <laughs> Try to touch a man's wife. <laughs> the man that just married now near his wife. <laughs> you will know whether he's gentle or not. <laughs> eh? You know whether he's gentle Every man will lose decorum. <laughs> One day I went to school to pick my daughter. And she said one boy was bullying her, just pushed her. I almost turned back. <laughs> I said, if you see him, do you know him? Unfortunately, you say I don't know him. I wanted to go back to the school office and harass him first. If you don't bring this guy out, I go to court. <laughs> I was vexing in the car. How can, how can you bully her? That's how God is angry. Huh? Somebody, you say he that tortured you, tortured the apple. Okay, let me put my hand in your eye. No matter how gentle you are. If you are a Jehovah lover, you are dwelling in the secret place. <laughs> because love is the secret that binds any two. Love is the secret of intimacy. I love God. No wonder Apostle Paul concluded Romans 8, from verse 37 to 39, he said, what? He said, no, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Number two, how can we realize this? 
serving the interests of the kingdom of God guarantees health and wholeness. Serving his interest. Exodus 23, 25, 26, it shall serve the Lord. He shall bless thy bread and thy water and take sickness away. And that is the old covenant. And we have a better covenant in Christ. Hear me. When we walk in the reality of our newness in Christ, we can reverse any organ in our body diseased. I heard the story of Robert during his latter years. He was sick and had appendicitis inflamed and he was in the hospital and the doctor said the solution is operation. And they checked him and saw it, they saw it inflamed. And Kenneth Copeland told the, the story, he said while he was on the sick bed, well, Robert remembered and prayed to God and said, Lord, I have sown seeds of healing. You have used me as a vessel to heal. I have sown financial seeds. I have done several things. So I'm supposed to reap healing. The doctors were looking at it with their, what do you call it? Is it a probe or whatever to look at it? They scan. They were looking at it. They saw it shrinking. Physically, it started shrinking and it shrunk back. What does that mean? He can try anyone. It's for us to stand our ground. If you don't know your right, he may take your rights. <laughs> so if sickness comes, cast it out. But the perfect plan is that for sickness not to come at all, from today you are covered in the name of Jesus. And when you are born again, you are made fruitful. I see fruitfulness be your portion in the name of Jesus. Anyone believing God for any form of fruitfulness, physical, business, in any area, hear me. I decree right now under this anointing, be fruitful. Be fruitful. In the name of Jesus. Give God a clap of faith. Shortly, we shall be engaging the anointing oil. But for the benefit of those who are new here, who do not really understand what we mean by the anointing oil, how can you just carry olive oil and you start to rub our things? I have rubbed cream from home. So what is this? The anointing oil is olive oil converted to the medium of the Holy Spirit by the faith of the believer. It is truly olive oil, but converted to the medium or the power of the Holy Spirit by the faith of the believer. This morning, every oil in your hand will be turned to the holy anointing oil in the name of Jesus. And you say, is this a mystery? Where did you get it from? Hear me. Jesus empowered his disciples with it. Mark chapter 6, verse 7, 12 and 13. That was referring to Jesus. And he called unto him the 12 and began to send them forth two by two and gave them what? Power. He gave them what? Over unclean spirit. Verse 12 and 13. And they went out and preached that men should repent. Verse 13. And they cast out devils. What do you cast out devil with? Power. <laughs> you need power to cast them out. And he gave them power. And now they cast out devils. 
and anointed many, anointed with oil many that were sick and he healed them. He gave them power. Now we saw the anointing with oil. And the instrument for the release of the power was the oil. So he gave them oil and called it power. The oil in your hand today is turning to power. The ministry of the anointing oil makes the following available to believers amongst others. I just run through it because of time. It changes men's status. The anointing changes men's status. Your status is changing this morning. It brings favor upon the recipient. We know the story of Saul in 1 Samuel chapter 10. It restores that which was lost. They told him, they asked, you went to look for, has been found. All that happened after the anointing. Hear me, whatever has been lost is being found. It is a sign producer. And they told him in 1 Samuel chapter 10, verse 7, and these signs shall come. When these signs are come upon thee, thou shalt do as occasion serve thee. It also heals sicknesses and diseases. We see that in James chapter 5, verse 14 and 15. If any sick among you, let him call for the elders of the church. Let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the rest, like they say, is history. Healing procured via the oil. It will interest you to know that the oil also works on things. In Exodus 30, 26 to 27, God instructed them to anoint the tabernacle, anoint the ark, anoint several other things. This morning, the oil will work for you in the name of Jesus. Stand up on your feet and give God a clap of faith. If any man be in Christ, so this morning, if you want to give your life to Christ, you want to be in Christ, you want to experience the nature of Christ, why not? Simple, easy is available. If you want to rededicate your life, with all heads bowed, put your hand on your chest. Pray this prayer after me a minute from the depth of your heart. Say after me, say, Lord Jesus. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I confess that I am a sinner and I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Come into my heart today. Make me a new creature. Help me to follow you never to turn back. From today, I am born again, never to go back. In Jesus' precious name, amen. For all who pray that prayer, the hospitality team will give you a form. You will feel and we shall be helpers of your faith. Give God a clap of faith. If you pray that prayer, give us a wave of faith. The hospitality team is here. Don't be shy. You are making decision with your Lord and your Savior is a personal race. Give God a clap of in church. Do you have your anointing oil? You have your bottle? For all who believe in the mystery. Lift it up. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray upon every bottle of oil lifted up. We have heard the word. We believe the mystery. I decree that every oil lifted up now becomes the holy anointing oil. I decree that it becomes the medium for the release of the power of the Holy Spirit. And as we apply it, we receive everything we desire according to our declarations. In the name of Jesus, amen. Put a tip on your finger, apply it to your head, and begin to pray.